If you've ever seen the movies Blade Runner, Ex Machina, or The Matrix, you have encountered what is generally known as cyberpunk cinema. However, in this genre, there are several tropes and patterns that contribute to a nuanced form of prejudice known as techno-orientalism in Western-made films. In this video, we will look at the primary features of techno-orientalism, how they function in the larger and Western cultural imagination, and how awareness of these tropes is only the first step towards combating this nuanced prejudice. Elena and I recognize that we don't identify as part of the Asian community, and we will be using our voices to amplify pre-existing research undertaken by Asian scholars and filmmakers. If you are interested in learning more about these researchers and filmmakers, check out their links in the descriptions below. Edward Said originally defined Orientalism in his book Orientalism as a style of thought based on an ontological and epistemological distinction between the Orient and, most of the time, the Occident. Basically, Orientalism is a colonial categorization of ideas, items, styles, people, and places from the Eastern Hemisphere that function as an ideological arm of imperialism by othering and lumping together. Techno-Orientalism, however, is future-oriented and most importantly globalist. According to English professors and media scholars David S. Rowe, Betsy Wong, and Dr. Greta A. Niu, in their book Techno-Orientalism, Imagining Asia in Speculative Fiction, History, and Media, they make the distinction further, saying, quote, While Orientalism defines a modern West by producing an oppositional and pre-modern East, techno-Orientalism symmetrically yet contradictorily completes this project by creating a collective, futurized Asia to further affirm the West's centrality. The techno of techno-Orientalism, then, then comes to signal Orientalism's relationship to economic globalization and to a form of temporal asymmetry, an Asianness characterized by the juxtaposition of cultural retrograde with technical advancement. Basically, it's imagining what Asian prejudice looks like in the future, economically and culturally. Or somebody spoke his language. This colonialist perspective is the bedrock for the prejudice that underlines the genre, a futuristic dystopian world where the dominant economic East serves as an antagonist to the economic West. I don't think I can stomach any more of this garbage. Exactly. So here. Here. Words out of my mouth. <laughs> This introduces us to our first trope of the cyberpunk world, which is a high-tech, dystopian, vaguely Asian-coded place, usually a city. It's not set in any specific country, nor does it pull from any specific Asian culture. Instead, it creates a collective, futurized Asia which serves to affirm Western centrality. Movies that feature this include Blade Runner with Asian background characters in the cityscape and a giant moving poster of a geisha in Ghost in the Shell, the city skyline featuring holographic ads with Asian faces, and in Cloud Atlas, the capital called Neo Soul also features yellow face characters. This brings us to our second trope, our white protagonist navigating that specific landscape. Again, you can see this in Blade Runner, in the live action Ghost in the Shell, The Great Wall, The Last Samurai, and even Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. I've never seen anything like this. Our third trope in cyberpunk cinema is the automaton archetype, cyborg character, which is almost always played by a vaguely Asian character, again, a lot of generic vagueness happening here. In Dr. Danielle Wong's essay, she identifies this trope with the following characteristics, the Asian laborer machine, which upholds model minority stereotypes, the dismemberment of the cyborg, which only occurs when the Asian cyborg threatens to breach white superiority, and if the cyborg is female, a fetishized, sexually subservient body that is also, eventually, violently dismembered. This trope is actually turned on its head in the animated classic Ghost in the Shell, where our female cyborg protagonist has agency in her decisions and embraces her cybernetic aspects, while at the same time contemplating the fine line between machine and human. Another recent film that subverts the subservient female cyborg narrative is Cake. The film premiered at the 2017 DC Asian Pacific American Film Festival and was directed by and featured Anne Hu, 
a Taiwanese-American director. In the film, she portrays a high-tech Asian sex robot ordered by a young white couple who want to add spark to their sex life. By deploying the stereotype of a racialized sex robot who turns the stigma on its head by forcing the audience to take a look at themselves, the film forces the audience to question their objectification and fetishization of Asian women. This concludes our brief presentation on identifying Orientalist prejudice in cyberpunk cinema. If you're interested in learning more about these biases, we highly recommend listening to Josephine Yee's presentation as well as checking out the sources linked below.